I'm going to read from a book called Lanterns on the Levee, Recollections of a Planter's Son by William Alexander Percy. It's published by LSU Press, um, and uh, the author was a cousin of Walker Percy. And this is a little recollection of a favorite teacher of his. Although a school teacher from his youth, Mr. Bass, I believe, hated teaching and learning by textbook. He would sit on the edge of his chair as though about to leap up and flop his knees together very fast as if a grasshopper's sound box ought to be between them. And you knew he wanted to dart off somewhere and you knew going with him would be much more interesting than staying anywhere. Further, you had a definite hunch where he longed to be going, to his garden. It was the worst looking garden I ever saw with no design, no order, really no sense, a hodgepodge of flowers and vegetables. But everything grew there and throve and bloomed as it did nowhere else. He had no preferences. A carrot was as dear as a peony, a black-eyed Susan as a rose. It only mattered that they were living things mysteriously standing in the earth and reaching for the sun. The mystery was everything to him. I never knew a heart so capable of wonder though of an earthly, unmodeling sort. When soaked with sweat and dabbed with dirt from digging, his ugliness rather resembled pans, not the maligned pan of the nymphs, but that gaunt, mysterious god of flocks and herds, of crops and weathers that rustics worshipped. The rustic pan in him made his garden for use, not looks. Any morning, if you were an early riser, you could catch a glimpse of him, hatless, dirty, untidy, a basket bulging with green things under his arm, and on the run. He dropped into people's front yards unbeknownst and planted unpredictable things, iris and tulips, of course, but just as likely salvia against a brink wall. Even more secretive were his vegetable errands. Before anyone was out or up, he'd leave heaps of them, tomatoes, corn, okra, and the like, on the back steps of his friends or preferably of the unknown and sensitive poor many a family he half supported whose name he never knew. And all of this by some unaccountable transmutation got itself into his teaching. The way he scuttled in and out of the classroom caused a draft, and if you'd seen grass growing from his ears you wouldn't have been surprised. Yet he had principles and ideas galore, and never hesitated to express them no matter how hostile the audience. His vehemence was infectious, and you knew he was right even when you knew he was wrong.